In Armenian, we say Baranarat Garbar. There was dance before word. Dance has always been part of humanity as significant ritual, ceremonial, communal, and social meaning transmitter and cultural expression. For instance, we even read about dance and dancing in the Old and New Testaments and other ancient civilizations. There is dance in all of life, wrote Gomidas, the famed priest, musicologist and founder of Armenian National School of Music. He explains that the spirit of national music is the aggregate of patterns that a nation instinctively employs in singing and dancing. It is the song and dance that are immediate, non-artificial, which are intrinsic reflections of the internal and external life of the folk. Besides their ritual, folk and artistic dimensions, Armenian dancers transmit human values and beliefs. In the past, they reflected the social cultural context of peasants and enforced connections with everyday life, rituals and traditions. Singing and dancing, as Gomidas puts it, is routine for the peasant as bread and water. As such, Armenian folk dancers, like other cultures, provide us a vast meaning system which enrich our lives today. It is this enriching background that I wish to talk about Armenian folk dances. Here I'd like to briefly talk about two very important figures who have contributed to the study and staging of Armenian folk dances enormously. In the 1930s, one of the most eminent scholars of the folk dance, of folk dance was ethnographer Sir Puhili Sitian, who is considered the founder of Armenian ethnochoreology. Over many years, Lisitian created an enormous archive of about 2,000 Armenian folk dances and theatre performance dances. She devised a system of transcribing dance movements, forms and styles, and is the author of many books and studies, most significantly her two-volume vol seminal study published in 1958 and 1972 entitled The Old Armenian Folk Dances and Theatrical Performances. Another outstanding artist and choreographer, Vahram Aristagesian, created new stage arrangements of Armenian national dances through his aesthetic approach. By shortening the duration of dances and changing the relationship between the dance phrase and the musical phrase, he created fluent transitions from the slow part to the fast part of the dance. He created folk suites combining dances of different character and rhythms from the same region. Sir Puhili Sitian devised a way to classify the forms and movements of Armenian folk dances into several categories. These categories include forms, dances danced in closed or open circles, dances where the dancers are lined up in walls facing one another. By dance steps is another category, three step, nine step, 12 step, one forward, one back, two forward, two back, two forward, one back, Dances like Innevotk nine steps or Yerekvotk three steps would have been danced by unmarried young girls who would walk along the dried up ravines to awaken the fertile earth and initiate life-giving rain and a good harvest. Dance steps, forms and movements convey a wide range of meaning. For instance, Kocharis are inspired by and imitate the mystical goat, ram or khoi. Goranis are song dances of lost love, lost land, and longing from Mushdaron region in our historic homeland. Lorges imitate the quail, variations of which are also danced by Kurds and Turks. Govans, also known as Govand, Giovand, linked linguistically to Gund, which means circle. Papuris, variations danced by Kurds. Ververis, that are harvest dances, etc. Another category is directions. Dances according to the direction of travel. Dances to the right tend to mark positivity, abundance, fertility, while group dances to the left, zahbar or zahort or eriparer, would only be danced on solemn occasions to mark a loss. Participants, dances that are only danced by women, dances for men only, dances for men and women mixed, dances for unmarried girls only, and dances for the entire community. Themes and occasions are another category. There are dances for virtually all occasions, battle dances, hunting dances, wedding dances, mourning dances, ritual dances, travel dances, work dances, such as fishermen, harvest, weaving, yogurt making, etc. Razmagan or battle dances would have traditionally been danced by men only before and after a battle. 
These dances continue to be danced by men and women in some instances as a symbol of solidarity and strength. Ritual dances are said to have been conducted along with singing, yirk barir or song dances, which gradually evolved to dancing around the central musicians playing the zurna, the lettish horn, and the hol, drum, and dancing around a central fire, as in the ritual dances of Dyaran Taraj, the feast of presentation of the Lord to the temple. These ritual dances would typically have lasted some 20 minutes, starting at a slow tempo and gradually getting faster. The Zurna player was ascribed very special status and would inherit this role, which would be passed along the lineage. In the past, these dances were danced at appropriate times and spaces by peasants. The themes were relevant to their daily work in the fields or at home, or were connected to particular occasions in the life of the family or community. Today, however, these dances are danced in different contexts and events than in the past. They are danced most often to recorded music, spontaneously, on social occasions or during organized public festivities. Occasions are initiated by a dance leader, leader, sometimes accompanied by live music, whereby everyone joins in. Such rituals are opportunities for those present who know the dance and others who learn on the spot. The power of these dances go beyond celebrations and social events. Dancing at large public demonstrations or political protests has become a new expression of collective strength and defiance. The best form of resistance is to live the culture and keep it alive. So, I would now like to take you from this, hum, uh, from this Gomitasi Shoror, Shoror dance type, to another one called Hamshena Shoror. Now, this shoror is a women's shoror, and Hamshen, how do I know? Hamshens are the Armenians living near the Black Sea, who are called Hamshen, and um, they're, well, they're Armenians. Their history is quite different. Their dances and music are different. Their spoken language is slightly different. Anyway, let's enjoy this. I absolutely love this. This is a women's Hamshen. Not, doesn't mean that men should dance it by any means. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. And the other thing about Hamshen dances is that somehow compared to Armenian dances, I mean, they are Armenian dances, but the Hamshen dances have a slightly different way of jumping to the, to the rhythm, but they're also very, very connected with the birds, and the eagle in flight and birds. You know, when I was talking about totem, uh, pagan, you know, pre-Christian worship, uh, so these, and you know, even like the Lorges we have, these are quails, these are, these are birds. So imagine that we are those animals, and uh, you're free to explore. So let me show you uh, this Hamshen Ashura, which is ever so delicate. I have to get to my, because this is important. So, the dance is actually very simple, and I'm going to talk to you about the rhythm. So. I know you can't see my feet now, but that's all right. Let me just talk about the rhythm. So it's step together, step, two taps with the left foot, and then it's sway gently on the left as the hand goes sway and sway, and two taps with the right foot next to it. Tap, tap. Now I'm going to go back and show you. The whole thing is quite delicate and together. I'm going to exaggerate so that you can see on the screen, okay? So it's, and the arms are going up and down, okay? We are like these birds. So it's one, two, three, four, tap, tap, right? And then five is swaying on the left foot as the arms go one, two, one, tap, tap with the right foot. So it's very small. One and two and three, tap, tap, sway, left, sway, tap, tap with the right foot. I'll turn around and I'll show you. One, two, three, tap, tap, sway, brother, and tap, tap. One and two and three, tap, tap, gentle sway on the left foot, tap, tap with the right foot next to it. Now, I'm exaggerating that tap, tap for effect, and the big, I'm taking big steps. But if you can minify that and bring it ever so tight under you, so I'll try and show you just for a moment. The other important thing is the arms going up and down. So you can see from the side, this is meant to be, it's not broken wrists, it's nothing, it's just, yeah. 
So it's this. And if we were dancing next to one another, um, the sides of our arms would be hooked like this. So it would be one and two and three. Tap, tap, sway and sway. Tap, tap. One and two and three. Tap, tap, sway and sway. Sorry, tap, tap. Now turn around, we do it together. One and two and three. Tap, tap, sway and sway. Tap, tap. One and two and three. Tap, tap, sway and sway. Tap, tap. So that's the dance. It's ever so beautiful. And the instrumentalization is actually very functional as well. There's a, short, a slow part and a fast part. That's the slow part. When it finishes, the fast part I will show you, but just follow it. And it's a bit like Tamzara's we've done. So it goes one and two and three, tap, tap, left together, left, double tap with the right foot. Right together, right, double tap with the left, left together, double tap with the right. So one, two, three, four, and then it's step and step and step, tap, tap, step and step and step, tap, tap. Step back and back and tap tap, back and back and back, tap tap. The forward back is again starting with the right foot. So it's right and left and right, double tap with the left, left and right and left, double tap with the right. Right and left and right, double tap with the left, left and right and left, double tap with the right. And then we go back, okay? It's ever so short, it's fun. So you'll see why it's got to be small and tight. Enjoy. I will dance. Can we have the music, please? Thank you.
bet.